one of my other buddies said like at the height of you know of covid was like i feel like street photographers were, were like one of the f few or only branch of of artists that weren't able to partake in the art form that brought us joy i mean painters could still paint in covid in, in their apartments in their homes singers could still sing musicians could still write music but like street photographers it was the one branch where we really couldn't do what we love doing we depended on the masses on you know the busy streets the, the interactions of everybody and that was like gone This podcast is brought to you by Squarespace, and you guys know how much I love Squarespace. In fact, I use it for my own website, adamlearner.net. If you guys want to save 10% on your Squarespace in domain, use the code ADAM at checkout, A-D-A-M, and you'll save 10%. We're super excited that uh, that you're on. Um, so, man. And I love keeping up with your feed. Oh, thanks, And, and your work. Um, how? I mean, let's just start with how, how, was, how was this last trip? you know yeah man it was uh it was great um primary reason for the trip happening was i was filming my first uh, photography workshop um uh, like online uh through some buddies that run that uh, company called moment and um yeah it's just you know something i've always wanted to do but just never felt like it was the right time or you know what would i even i'm not the best articulator in terms of just like technical aspects of photography there are a lot of great youtube channels that like I can name a lot, a lot right now, my buddy Matt Day, uh, Willem. They're guys that are just so well-versed and polished in terms, like I'm, not, I'm the least technical photographer out there. Um, so in terms of just like teaching a workshop, I was like, oh dude, I mean, I can't, I know how things work with my cameras and, and but I, I'm, I, I suck so bad at telling you how it worked. Like there was a portion where I tried to explain in the workshop uh, zone focusing it makes sense in my mind. I know how to work it and it, it's just a, it's a rhythm thing, but to explain it, it's just, okay, yeah, you might as well go watch another video of somebody trying because I cannot explain to you how zone focus work, works, but I know how it works um, in my mind. I'm not the best at that. So if this, uh, this workshop was more um, on just the why, why do we pick up a camera, why I pick up a camera, uh, just photographic storytelling, um, building long form projects, um, so that I kind of dived into my process there or my, my ethos there. And, um, but also how important it is in my opinion, um, allowing your background and your story and your influence in terms of what you've experienced as a human being to influence you uh, when you're behind the camera, because whether we know that it's happening or not, our personal experiences are radically in fact, uh, like are radically affecting how we see the world and how we choose to photograph a certain thing or compose a certain thing or drawn to certain elements. And I've noticed that years ago when I was like drawn to certain things on the street and I'm realizing as I was going through some pretty traumatic stuff back then that there was this, there was this commonality, this common bond that I was being related to or drawn to on the streets. And so that's kind of what, you know, struck it for me. Um, and so this workshop was just a, a really great way for me to finally dive deep into some of these practices that I've been implementing in my work for years. And I've never really shared that, you know, I have a YouTube channel, but it's just more of just like me bumming around taking photos and I don't really get deep into that. And, and so for me, it was, uh, yeah, we um, went to uh, Wyoming and Montana and uh, hit about four or five cities across those two states. And just kind of, they followed along as Maddie and I kind of did this trip and we got to spend about a, a 24 hour period on a, on a ranch uh, out there um, documenting just this small, I mean, 20 person town, Glen Montana, literally 20 people live in this town. Um, and I think we met probably half of them, uh, which was insane. Um, but just went, they had a 40,000 acre a, a ranch, a cattle ranch. And uh, that had been something I've been dying to photograph me coming from a small town. I lived on a farm also when I was younger. Uh, so to, to kind of go back onto a farm, uh, as an adult uh, with my, my cameras and to riding horseback and to watch them do what they do um, and for them to allow me into their space uh, to document them was a really intimate, special, special moment. As well as doing some kind of, some landscape teaching points. You know, I got on photography on landscape back in 2011. So to kind of revisit my first love, what drew me into the, into the practice uh, was really special. Um, so yeah, I, that 
was like the, the middle part of the trip. But the first week, my, my wife and I went out a, a week early. I've never really spent time in the Southwest of the United States. And so we got to really um, jump into that, which was really special. Um, and then on the tail end, uh, revisited um, my town where I went to college in Spokane, Washington. A lot of my buddies were there. So I got to see some old friends. And then we road trip back down to Los Angeles uh, and had a little just chill three days. So yeah, it was a long three weeks, all that long answer, long winded answer, which as we go about this podcast, you'll know, I, I just, I rabbit trail and I go, I, you ask me one question, I'll end up a totally different direction. So I apologize. No, no, no. And I'm like I, keeping in my head, like the, you know, I, yeah, I think, it, really, I think that that's great. I mean, we, there's the, the thing about this podcast is that there's no rules. There's no format. Great. Perfect. Um, I think our objective is really just, you know, we, we love the photographer's work that we have um on the, on the podcast and then we're dying to dive deep into yeah. their mind and their mentality so the more you you're willing to share the more we're willing to i mean the more we'd love it you know what i mean it's so it's great do your thing right. <laughs> we're, we're, we're not gonna like be like f stop and you know we're okay, great. yeah love it. i mean it's interesting your approach to photography because that's kind of how i play good music you know i i yeah I see some zero, stuff back there it's all bokeh out. I mean, you that de the depth of field right now you got back there is insane. I don't know how you wait, you had a one point four right now. Look at that. Look at the, I'm at a three point two. A three point two. Wow. Um, so we are talking about f stops. Yeah, just the only it's it's, it's interesting because like I you know I have no formal training as a musician at all, but I love yeah. it and and you know I, I I you know photography kind of is something that I also kind of pursued simultaneously, and I kind of spent most of my time when I was younger doing music and then I kind of transitioned back into photography, but yeah. I feel the same way. Like, you know, for me, it's more about feel, you know, mm -hmm. like I remember I, I posted a YouTube video about lighting a long time ago. Yeah. And like one of the dudes in the comments was like, dude, you could just use a light meter. And I'm like, yeah, but the light meter is going to give me a starting point, but it's not going to give me the flavor. Right. You know, it's not going to, it's not going to like, is the light meter going to, you know, am I going to meter for the highlights? Am I going to meter for the shadows? Yeah. And then, you know, you, you come to realize that you can have all the technical knowledge in the world. Absolutely. But, but your work, you know, I, it's, it just, it's beautiful and it doesn't matter where it came from, you know, just because you don't have the years of classical training to be able right. to go on and on exactly. about the technical aspect. Yeah. I don't think it's, I don't think it matters at a certain point. You become kind of your own master mm -hmm. or mastery, let's say of a certain thing. Yeah. Um, and, and interestingly, you shoot both digital and film. Right. But, um, and mostly what it looks to be like mostly color film. What mm -hmm. kind of, what kind of is behind the choice to shoot, let's say film over digital when digital is so easy right. and film is so much more difficult. Sure. Yeah. I definitely, I think right now, in terms of digital and film, I'm probably 80% film. I've got a like M10. Um, in terms of digital, that's pretty much what I'm going to shoot. Uh, I would like to have the SL2s eventually, uh, the Leica, just to be fully Leica system, because uh, I do a lot of commercial work, um, and obviously brands are going to want the, the quick access of just digital assets. However, my manager is pitching hard. I'm, I'm trying to get more into just like all 120, all 35 millimeter. Just like, let me shoot film for these projects. I promise it's worth the few extra days to get it processed and scanned. And, um, but anyways, I, yeah, I just, I mean, I started photography back in 2010, 2011, just on iPhone four, um, during college. And uh, so I was iPhone only for the first few years as I'm just like learning how to do this thing. It was a hobby. It was for fun. And then it kind of, took off for me and uh, provided me with some incredible opportunities um, early on when I had no idea what I was doing uh, and just trying to fake it. And um, I don't know, I, my wife bought me, it was uh, on our, our, our wedding day. Uh, we got married in September 4th, 2015 in Iceland. And she gifted me, I made an off comment the year, probably when we were engaged. She was like, Oh, I'd love to start shooting film. I don't know where that came from, but it just, maybe I had a buddy that I looked up to that was shooting film or something. And so just made that little off comment and she remembered that and bought me a Canon AE-1 film camera, 50 mil, a few rolls of film. We were going to honeymoon in Paris uh, that week following. And uh, I, I was blown away that I, you know, so it's her fault that got, you know, it's, you know, she's the reason to blame why I got into, into film and the thousands of dollars I've spent since getting, mm -hmm. buying film and getting to process and buying film cameras now. So, uh, but that week, 
first week of marriage uh, in Paris uh, during our honeymoon, had a few rolls of film, looked up some YouTube videos on how to load a Canon 81, how to even work it mechanically. Because again, I'm coming from iPhone guy to, you know, I had a Canon Mark II or three at the time. And again, not pretty uh, tech savvy. Uh, I was just like, I hope I'm doing this right. Shoot a few rolls of film in Paris. Uh, we get back to Portland, Oregon, where we were living, drop them off at the lab, stoked. I think it's like three rolls, get them back. Two and a half of the rolls, blank, nothing on them. And I'm devastated. It's like my honeymoon, like these photos, I'll be able to show our kids someday. I'm so excited to see these. I have 16 photos out of three rolls um, come back. And it was just, it was one of those, those giant fat L's I had to take. And I had to take early on at a crucial, intimate week of, of just, I mean, I mean a, a really, yeah, it was our honeymoon. And I just, dude, it was devastating. And I almost gave up. I was like, oh, this isn't it. This is not the answer photographically. Let me just go back to digital. But, but the, confidence, the confidence you had, though, to shoot in that film is inspiring. But, it, but also the confidence, I was like, oh, I'm 100% doing this correctly. Like, I had no doubt in my mind that this was going to be a failed experience. How can this not turn out? I mean, like, oh, I this, is, this is great. The, the, the situation is perfect. I, I feel like, you know, they're metering well, I think. And I think it was just obviously, a, obviously 100% a user error. And I didn't load it correctly or maybe I wasn't advanced. No, but, the camera's, it's the camera's fault. Yeah, yeah. She, camera, bought you, she bought you a bunk camera, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like the lens cap didn't automatically come off the lens. Exactly. It's supposed to do that. There's a ejection. 100%. But no, and that was just a really <clears throat> bittersweet um, situation. I also think one of the uh, photos that did come out, a portrait I took of Maddie, is probably one of my favorite photos of her, so I'm very thankful that I have that. Um, but no, it was just one of those, yeah, it just kind of wake me up moments, and I just kept, kept But that's, that. I think, part of the victory. Like, what you just said there, that yep. that's one of your favorite portraits you ever took yep. of the person that's the most cherished in your life. Absolutely. That probably is what galvanized you the bond that you had to this film because you're like, okay, it's there. Absolutely. I know it's there. It's yeah. there. That's it. I can do that. 100%. Yeah. That's, that's answer, really incredible. To answer that question quickly, which is like a quick answer. It's like film is challenging. It's hard. There's nothing easy about it. Anybody can take a Mark IV, uh, a Q1, Q2. It doesn't matter. Like anybody can grab a digital camera and blast a hundred frames in five seconds. And 98 of those photographs are going to be usable. Great well composed like that there's no where's the decision making in that there's no you know to keep it clear i mean there's no decisive moment in that five second gap of you know capturing a hundred frames it's just and so for me i and i saw myself doing that early on in my career where i was just like blasting a scene a really quick you know paced moment and i was just like i could post any one of these photographs and it would be great like i don't know like and so when i had that horrible experience with film in Paris I was like okay this is I gotta work at this this is challenging this is difficult this is not easy this isn't as easy as iPhone this isn't as easy as digital and so I would I was just obsessed with the challenge I was a, an athlete growing up and uh, competed at a high level in high school and college and kind of when photography happened I just kind of stopped you know my sport stuff and this was that that challenge of just like okay i'm, I'm a competitive person at, at nature and to know that it wasn't as easy as as digital that drew me in and then i just got lost in the in the medium and um and so now it's like obviously i've learned a lot more and i'm pretty comfortable and i'm 35 and 120 um and it took me a while to to, to get to that level but now it's just like especially i mean 2020 i'm a pretty fast-paced individual um i from my personality type uh, film fits beautifully with how my mind works um, and how it just it's a it's a I don't know it's a good control for me um, that I can't just go back and look at all those photos and delete a few and like oh I could do better here you know it's just like hey I gotta trust my instinct I gotta trust my gut I gotta trust the thing, things that I've learned or the things that I'm drawn to compositionally and um, and I think that just is making me a sharper and, and stronger photographer um, I feel like when I'm with digital, I go back into those tendencies of just shooting quick, blasting, blasting, and just like looking at all of okay, it. And I just, I like not having the crutch of looking at a, a screen after I take the photo. And for me, it's just, um, yeah, I, I love those, uh, those imperfections. And I love that it's a little bit uh, more challenging to, to get the, the moment. Right now, my photography, I'm, 
I relate to you and and your and your passion for film and sort of exactly what you said. Mm-hmm. And I was doing um, an engagement session yesterday, and I had um, my M10, I had my M9M, okay. I had my I had my SL2. Oh, you got the full yeah. and and I, I had my, and I had my Roly, right? Oh, oh, nice. Um, and with the M10, I like I just found falling into, you know, even though it's a like a rate, you know, it's slower yeah, than yeah. than yeah. Right. you know, there's no frame frames per second, but I'm shooting, I'm shooting. The buffer is huge, right? The M9M, it's even in digital, it's a much slower process because I know I got five frames, six frames before right. the buffer kicks in. Absolutely, and like, you know, so and. Clear. There are times that I'm like clicking and nothing's happening. I'm like, fuck. You're not even clicking. Yeah. And you're not clicking. You're just pushing it. You know, you're pushing it down. And there's beauty in in the different tools that 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 we have. Sure. But right now, for me, I, whether I'm shooting 120 or 35, and yeah. mostly I shoot black and white because I like processing myself at home. Nice. Um, something that, like you said, you. It was almost my failures in the beginning yeah. that drove me to really try to hone that processing and, and the shooting. I mean, it felt like the shooting was, you know, one aspect and the processing for me was an extremely difficult yeah. process for me to handle. I'm not a mathematical yeah. guy. I'm not a technical guy. So one to 64, all the chemistry involved and, yeah. but like, the satisfying moments. And I'm sure it's like when you get your scans back or even when I do color and I get my scans back, you're like, you know, let's, let, you know, it's, it's it. exciting. 100%. Man. I totally agree. And I think the M10 is that exception digitally, which is why I love that camera. Uh, and I feel like it's so seamless from switching between the M6 and the M10. Um, and I, cause it's like, a, it's a hard, it's a hard digital camera. There's not a lot of like auto features. I think there's auto, I have it all. Cool. I think there's an auto. Yeah, I, I, I don't use ISO. I don't use ISO. Yeah, I, don't use ISO. I, don't do, I don't use that. Yeah. No, I don't like the choices it makes because it, it always makes things too bright. 100%. You don't have like that real yeah. kind of dramatic. I always kind of underexpose a little bit. And yeah, so you know, if you had to take one camera and one lens right now. Like an or, M28 millimeter. That's it. You don't even think about it. The M6 and 28 millimeter. If I had to give up, if I had to give up digital medium for, I would, I would th- give up medium format so quick. I give up digital so quick. Leica M6, 28 millimeter lens. Just the fact that- I like, I like the <laughs> if, way that you were so decisive about that. It, I, I'm doing a, uh, I started a project that for a year, I'm gonna have one camera, one lens. It's someone's like kind of mentoring me through yeah. a friend. Um, you know, one camera, one lens, going back to old school Magnum type of- Love it. Theory, one film stock, Ooh. process once a week anyways. My deliberation over what the fuck to pick, <laughs> literally, and I don't talk to my wife about anything about cameras or she just doesn't give a shit. And I, I mean, Adam, did, did, did your ears not bleeding from? Geez, I'm, I'm still Sorry, recovering said, from from that you know, agonizing I'm, debate. I'm like blessed to have different tools. But at you know, my look, disposal. I was I was in the same boat. I was like M6 35 millimeter because he doesn't have a 28, but I was like, I, yeah, 28 not. Us, if you're gonna no, tell a story, and 35 is not it. 30, I have a 35, I got a 35 right here on my, my M6, but the 28, Yeah, this every, is, I have never. So this shot, is what's with me. Is that a, what is that, 35? That's the 35 version three. Yeah. It's 28, the, the Sumacron or the Sumalux? Who, mine? Yeah. Uh, Sumacron, yeah. I mean, the Sumalux would be great, but it's also eight grand. And it's I have a huge like and, rant and <laughs> food on the table. So yeah, I, I did get to test out the 28. And I just, I mean, I feel like I was, after a, a week of, of shooting the street, I feel like I was getting arthritis in my hand because I'm just, right. you have to have, it's, I think it might be like six pounds or something, just the lens itself. Yeah, yeah. And, but also the, the possibility of stopping down to 1.4 on a 28 is, I mean, it's Same. absolutely yeah. marvelous. But I think the Sumicron is, is sufficient. But I think the 28, it's pretty true to, in my opinion, Joel Merritt says 35 is pretty true to eye of what you see. I would have to disagree with the legendary, and he's probably right. I know nothing. But the point, when I look at a frame or I'm on a street and I- That's all about you. I, and we use and that's it. the thing, 28, that is, that is how well, I- Why see. not just get a like a Q or Q2? It's a 28.17. It is. I mean, I had, we had the like a Q, a uh, great camera. Um, again, I just, I was relying on just the, 
the all auto quickness. I don't know. It just, right. I would love to have the Q2 eventually uh, for some of my, uh, my commercial work. I think it's a great camera, but I, I, I gave up the, I gave up uh, the Q2. I had the Q, the Q2. Cause for the wedding work I do. It was, yeah. I feel like that would have been a great It was camera. always around my neck, but the 28 was never really it's the best focal one. length for me. It just oh, so good. <laughs> But if, yet, if, but you if, guys, if, if the Q2 had a 35 a fixed, if it had, it's, it's right. totally different. I mean, you can crop into 35, but still something. And especially with the Q2, it, it's just not, you know. I just feel like every time I shoot 35, um, not every time, but I feel like the majority of the time, I just wish I had more space. I wish it wasn't as tight. Right, totally. Um, and for, tw- for 28, I can get as, I, I just, I like being mobile. I'm a runner and so I like be, I'm pretty fast paced, especially when I'm on the street. So I Which like- It's so funny because you're really, talking about like, it fits your personality. You're so quick that like, you would think digital would be, you know, more in line with, but does the, the film makes you slow down? It makes you like- take Yeah, but also, I mean, the colors. I mean, I- The colors are fun. Yeah, colors. Yeah. And even in, in black and white, I, sh- I do shoot a lot of black and white, uh, more color. I'm probably 75% color to black and white, but I just- they're, I love portrait. I love the way that portrait responds. I'll, I'll say um, this: like, which, so I hope, I hope that you keep doing that because the stuff that you're doing, the color stuff you're doing on film with your M6 is absolutely gorgeous. And there's there's inspiration mixed with mixed <laughs> with the jealousy of where you are in the country and being yeah. able to, you know. Um, but it's but it's great. I mean, I well, think it's putting yourself out there and also gaining access. The two things combined you know, would make for interesting storytelling. And that's, yeah. I think, what attracts us and probably a lot of other people to looking at the work that you post because it's not just, you know, it's not your run-of-the-mill stuff. I mean, you know, I'm going to Cuba, now I'm in Iceland, you know, now I'm in New York City. Right. It's a pretty fun journey to be on, just just vicariously looking at your yeah. work. And that's just, like, my one of my biggest, like, philosophies with photography is just... I don't know. I was, I was encouraged early on in my career by somebody that I'm so close with and um, that I look up to professionally was just to like, Joe, like find, find your niche, find your lane, stick in it. Only share that work that you want to get hired for. And I was doing that for a while and I was just like shooting the same thing over and over and over and over again, getting some work here. But I was just like, dude, I'm drawn and I'm starting to like fall in love with the street and fall in love with just this candid, photographic practice um as well as portraiture as well as some studio stuff as well as landscapes as well as you know and i was just like but i gotta i gotta stick in my lane i gotta keep doing the one thing and i just like you know what that's not it that's not the move for me i don't think um and why is like i just want because i just wanted to be confident that in any moment in life that life throws at me um i would be equipped educated and confident enough to make a photograph in any scene, no matter what, no matter the device, no matter the medium. Cause I feel like a lot of photographers were, were so, we put so much restriction on ourselves photographically that we don't, we don't know how to photograph in certain elements. Like, Oh, I can't photograph. I can't make a photograph if I don't have studio lighting or if I'm not in the studio, I can't make a photograph if there's anything other than a, a pretty gorgeous landscape or I can't make a photograph unless I have a really pretty model center frame and so it's just like we put these weird things where it's just like well, I can't photograph unless I'm shooting film. You know, you hand a film photographer a digital <laughs> camera, they don't know what to. It's just like I just wanted to take all these different things that I've learned over the years. It's like I just want to be confident that any moment in life I can make a photograph. Period. Um, and that's my favorite thing to do is I always have a camera on me if I'm just going out to dinner or if I'm on a simple drive. Since I just got, I might not take a photo, but it's just like I want to be ready to get because you have. I mean being a photographer, you have, those moments come in and so quick. And there's sometimes where I don't even, I can't get it because I'm driving, but I'll just like see that the way the light is hitting in this building. And there's maybe this interaction between this, this couple or something. And I just like, I look at that moment, I get lost in the, in the beauty of it. Like make, like clicking that shutter and dancing the film yeah, just yeah. brings me so much joy. I, uh, like I'm drawn, I'm drawn to light. I'm sure that's the fucking most cliche thing you can say <laughs> well, as a photographer, but well, that's yeah. it guys. We're you drawn know, to light. That's it. I'm out. <laughs> Good light. Um, no, but there was like window light coming in yesterday on like Buzz Lightyear on the floor, just like, you know, oh, lying man. down. Oh, Buzz. Yeah. And, you know, whether it's coming on the table on like the kids' toys or that's, you know, to me, like for something so mundane and yeah, like, I see every day, I just see their toys all over the place all the time. But it's like the, 
the way the light hits the wall and it sounds, I know you guys understand and anyone who's listening, yeah, yeah. you either get it or you don't um, yeah, right. or, or you're, or you're learning it. But for me, it feels so instinctual and good yeah. and, and personal the way a light comes in that I'm drawn to something like yesterday. What I enjoy about weddings is um, you're making these emotional photographs for, for them forever, but mm -hmm. you never know what you're walking into. You never know the lighting in that day. You never know yeah. all these unknowns. So mm -hmm. it gives you the confidence, like you were saying, that you're able to make these portraits in any situation. You're able to right. document. Yep. Um, and, it's, and it's always new. There's always something different. You know, what, you know what it is? It's like, the musician reference always comes true, but it's like all the stuff that we did up until that point is the rehearsal. Yeah. You know, when you practice your woodshedding, you know, like when you realized like, Oh shit, I kind of suck at film. Yeah. And you, you're like, but I don't want to suck at film. Right. You, yeah. you got yourself to a point now where you can walk outside with your camera, whether yeah. it's film or whatnot, and you have the tools to just have performance. You see something beautiful, you can get it. Yeah. And you're not thinking like, what is the technical, like how am i going to do this now yeah you, you have the you have the tools the confidence inside to be able to do that and um i think a lot of that i think you're probably a hell of a lot more technical than you think it's just that because you didn't have like let's say a classical background right, right. you might not have the terminology to be able to encapsulate that in like a lesson that sure. is cohesive yeah but i honestly would almost rather learn from somebody like you who's conversational and practical and actually can put this stuff to practice than say like, here's how it works on paper. Right. That and to I, me is, I, is yeah. yeah. Cause I realize that there's so much, so many more gifted individuals that can tell you about those things. And I, for me to try to do that, it's just, I feel like I'd be doing everybody a disservice or I'd make it even more confusing for somebody to try to understand that. Yeah. Um, being dyslexic, it's just, I've got those weird things where it, it makes sense and it's all jumbled up and it's, it's hard to, communicate it and that's where it's like the hardest thing teaching you know this workshop it was like how to tell somebody when sometimes it it's a feeling it's just this weird gut and i can't it's even hard to communicate that it's like there'll be times where the, the producers are like okay so why did you take that i was like I'm, it just it felt right uh i'm I, here <laughs> you know and it's just like try to tell somebody and that's just like years of you know digesting incredible books uh you know studying the, the greats that have gone before us that are still around us and just kind of being all in a hundred percent i've just like i've so much of it now is this weird it's like this this dance and this this poetry that happens whether it's with portraits or whether it's on the street or whether it's even commercial work it's just so much of photography now is a feeling that sounds so cheesy and corn i hate it but it's like i don't know that I don't think that's. Like, try to communicate that. It's like you just gotta be. You gotta be all in. You gotta. Well, be it's all it's in. you know. What you gotta get like, lost in the practice. Like you asked, you know, a musician, like you know, what was the inspiration? And sometimes they'll give you sure. some big story. Right. Sometimes they'll say, "Yeah, I had a I had a turkey sandwich, and all of a sudden <laughs> I just thought of something, yeah. and I wrote it down, and that was the song." You that's know, how like, that's how he wrote "Let It Be." You know, right. <laughs> the inspiration you know look the thing is is that you're firing on all cylinders your 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 mm. creative you know juices are flowing so you're at that ready position always yeah so that when you see something all of us you know yeah. beautiful like we're just gonna go for it get to react yeah, get yeah. nobody's telling us yeah. to do it i don't have anybody on my shoulder saying like hey you should go take that picture of that thing right and and i think that that's what probably is what's fortunate about you know somebody like you is that you've got this incredible drive that's mm. just constantly flowing and and wherever you are you're gonna yeah. you're going to find those things and, yeah and and trying to communicate that to somebody who doesn't have that drive you, you, you that's not something you one can attain you know so true. yeah but you have also mm. the discipline of being a runner yeah and and i'm sure that that probably has some kind of impact on the discipline hmm. you have with your work because yeah. running is, is a, is a pursuit from what I understand. I'm not a runner myself. I'm a yeah. bicyclist, but I do yeah. understand that, that runners have a certain way of, it's an intensity it kind is. of constantly flowing in there. Yep. Absolutely. No. Yeah, I definitely, I think that's true. Uh, running, especially getting back into running. I got back into running the start of COVID. I, you know, I was just bored and I was, 
living with my in-laws. I'm just like, I need, I need an outlet. I need to get back into it. Um, and it's, it's done absolute wonders for my mental health, for my physical health, for my, my creative health. Um, uh, it's been a game, an absolute game changer. Um, for me artistically and that's been like the best thing that's come out of you know these last unexpected seven months um, and uh, I don't know yeah like you said I haven't really dived deep into like how running specifically is affecting kind of um, my practice whenever I pick up a camera but I know there is something happening there there is a, a bond that is happening uh, when I have the outlet to um, to run and to think because I don't like listening to music or pocket I, I get lost in like I said even when I'm running I'm, I'm spotting light it's a great way of being to a new city to, to location scout. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about projects. I'm, you know, yeah, it's just, it, I'm constantly thinking about that uh, even when I'm running. And that's been like the best thing is it's, it's yeah, it's well, isn't it amazing. Like a lot of overlap. you could drive, you know, I don't know how far you run, like maybe five, 10 miles. You could drive that, that five, 10 mile route. Yeah. You'll see next to nothing on the side mm -hmm. of the road. You'll see yep. a few things. Oh, a cool house. There might be a deer, maybe somebody's dog, a little kid, whatever. Yeah. You run those five, 10 miles, you see everything. everything. You notice things that you've never seen. You could drive yep. by that a hundred times. Yep. You, you run it or, or bike it, you see everything. The smells, all the it. light, the, all the nuances. And I think that that's, I think it's a great pursuit. I mean, I, I know that for me, if I didn't have biking, like, yeah. I, I don't know if I could, I could have handled <laughs> yeah, yeah. with this isolation. 100%. So true. Yeah. That's, that's wicked. Well, I don't do, I don't do anything physical. <laughs> that's why you look <laughs> and, so and good. That's also a problem. That's why I look yeah, so I, pink. You look, you look pretty great for not doing anything. For not doing anything? Yeah. yeah that's why it cuts off below, you know. Smart. Yeah. Smart. Yeah. It's no. great. Pump. great pump. He's got thunder thighs. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. Uh. <laughs> thighs of <and> tree trunks. <laughs> oh. Um, so we know what 35 millimeter you'd pick. I see a lot of your work. You, what, what 120, um, if you were shooting medium format, um, which do you feel connected to? Uh-oh, stumped the photographer. It, it is tough, yeah. I so mean, the other answer was like this. I know. He said that he I'm, would give I'm, up I'm, everything for 35 yeah, millimeters. Yeah, yeah. Right. But, you know. But I've got two go-to 120s. I have the Mamiya 7.2, incredibly portable. The, probably the most, in my opinion, one of the most fun and portable um, 120 cameras out there. However, I love the portraiture element of my Mamiya RZ67. Being able to stop down to 3.5 or 2.8 on the 110, something that Mamiya 7 cannot do. It's not a great portrait lens. Uh, maybe kind of environmental portraits, full body stuff, but like what the RZ offers me to be able to get really punched in and to create that separation between my subject and my surroundings is, I, I absolutely love it for that. It is a pain in the ass to travel with. I took it to India last year. My RZ, I don't even know what the hell I was thinking, but took my heart. <laughs> I came back with like back pain, lower back issues, just like cranks. I had to go to the car, but it was a whole big thing. And I thought, that was the right move. And I left my Mamiya 7 at home, which was not the right move. But I think it would be the Mamiya 7 too, purely on, uh, it's a rangefinder system. So it's absolutely fluid for me going from my Leica to the Mamiya 7. I don't skip a beat there. Um, I, it's, you can't beat its portability. And for the negative that it provides with ha how compact and just, it, it's very intuitive. It fits great in your hand. Uh, you know, the RZ is obviously was meant for a studio camera. It's not really meant much, for the, much different beast. Yeah. Yeah. It's a totally different thing. However, I, I hope to get here soon to get jump on the Pentax six, seven vibe. Never tried it. I'd love to see what that's all. About. I was, yeah, I was going to say that that's sort of my six, seven. Is this uh, a, it's, well, it's an SLR, right? It's or, an SL, uh, it is an SLR. It's um, I love it. It's just, it's, it looks sexy. You got that giant wood handle, which is yeah. something I want, but it also has a, a waist level finder too, doesn't it? It does have a waist level finder. So. Oh man, that is so much more attractive. So, than and RZ. so this, so I've, I've ne like, again, I am a range, range finder guy, so I don't shoot with an SLR. So the focusing, but the screen is so bright and I think it's like the split, you know, I'm not technical like that. So I don't know exactly what sure. kind of screen you can with the six, seven, two. Um, I don't know if you can replace the, um, is, that the is that the second one? Yeah, this is the second one. What's the difference between the second and the first? I think there's a mirror lockup. So a mirror okay. up. So if you want to, you know, if you're doing whatever. 
you can you can flip the mirror up you compose you everything and then you mirror up and you take the shot love it what are the lenses like for those six, so the seven? what so the 105 two four is like oh, that, that yeah so th that's the lens and it, this is it so it's like wow. not much what's that on a on the like a, medium format uh, not sensor uh crop. 25 so what 105 would be a Oh, it's like it's a 70, a 60, six, high 60, 70, right? Okay. I thought a 105 would be like about like a... Adam, no, he's, he's the tech. He's no, the no, no. I think it's probably like a 75 millimeter okay. equivalent Jeez. or so. 2.4, yeah, that's definitely going to so, be... So the, so the yeah. portrait, so you're talking like about the perfect RZ... perfect portrait. So you're saying the RZ67 and a lot of people have been telling me, and I know Somebody in the comments, it, leave us the conversion. You yeah. know, um, I'm not it, it's, it's just a, to hold, to carry it, the portability, the, the maneuverability you lose with a camera like the RZ, you get other things in studio, whatever. Um, right. But with the Pentax, like I throw it over my shoulder and it's just like, yeah, it's a fucking big camera, but it's not. It's worth it. And, and it's so easy. Would but you take it to fun. India? That definitely. My other buddy who went with me, he t I took the RZ, he took the Pentax 7. So, but his experience looked way more enjoyable than mine. <laughs> I, I felt like, oh, he just had it swung around. He picked it but up. also, he, like, he, no. it's faster so, like, to use. So, like, you too. chose the six set. You chose the the um Mamiya the Mamiya seven. So yep. I love the Claw Belt. The, no, the yeah, yeah. You know, that's great. So it's something. It's like exactly the same as the six this, seven. As six the, seven or is that six four five? It's a six seven. Okay, nice. And the, the you know, it extends. That's, that looks just like the the Mamiya two seven two. I mean, that's... yeah. So it and it focuses. Um, I mean, it's a range finder, so exactly the same. Except you can't no interchangeable lenses. So if you right. someone who's doing more versatile landscapes and other right. things, you probably yeah. want the the ability to change lenses. But um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a pretty wide focal length kind of guy. Um, like I don't understand. And that just makes me marvel more at his greatness and what he was able to do. But like how Henry Cartier Brisson, his go-to was the 50 mil, like for his almost his entire career. He got he dabbled into the 35 a little bit, but like yeah. the, some of the most iconic shots we've ever seen from him came from the of 50 millimeter. And that lens, get that focal length gives me the heebie-jeebies. I don't know how anybody really sees in a 50. It's so well, it's, I I so the 30, 30, I don't understand the 35 it. to me choosing that. The 35 to me was it was. A departure from I like a 35, but I'm not, right. I am a 50 kind of shooter. I could shoot wow. anything and everything with a 50. That blows my mind. I that and I applaud you for that. No, and so the, don't so know the, how do you see in that? I mean, I see it as a portrait lens. Like I could never. Well, I kind of. If see you gave you, me a street, if you gave me a 50 on my Leica and told me to go in the streets, I would have a panic attack. I would like, <laughs> and that's maybe something I need to work on. I've got my limitations also, but no, for me, I mean, oh, how would I? Because I like getting close, and to well, then it's that not, limits me exactly. from getting close. So I, from a personality standpoint, I like to, be, I, I would prefer to be a little, little removed. Sure. sure. Um, and when I see things, you're saying, you know, the 35 maybe is like this, the 28 is like that, you know, however you yeah. wanna. So if, when I look at something, a lot of times I'm, I, I, I'm looking a little bit like that. Yeah. So, um, great. We need people to see in multiple different ways. You know, all all different ways, and you look back. You know, look. I was looking at like El, you know Elliot Irwin and other oh, photographers that even Saul Leiter, dude. Like he was 50, constantly on an like, eight mil or longer. Like, and he's yeah. one of the most abstract, incredible photographers to do it. And she's like, dude, man, to see like these people have seen before, it's just mm -hmm. I don't know. It's yeah, I applaud them for that. But. but that's why sometimes, like even yesterday, I was out shooting the session, and I felt like one of those like photojournalists from the sixties and seventies with yeah. like. All these cameras around my neck, and I'm like, what? Sometimes I'm like, I wish I just have one. You just take one. I mean, it's not. But but it's part of the journey, I think. Yes. You know, like you you might ultimately have just one camera for the job, right. but for now, yeah. But when you have an you're hour, you're excited, and, you and you're balance like getting. You know, I it's mean, the I mean, trade off. Where where I'm at is, um, in my love affair with film, it's like I wish I could shoot film all the time yeah For, but i i just i think like the one voice in my head is like well you know this couple or this client wouldn't appreciate it or they want their photos do you have people bigger. do you have clients wanting you to only shoot film or is that something no. clients, no. i don't have any clients that are like i only want you to shoot film i have some clients that want me to shoot film but they also want the digital but they but they want digital as well and so my yeah. balance is making my digitals have i think that's what any photographer tries to do is to kind of get emotion out of a digital file sure 
that sure. film is just instantaneous. Yeah. Yeah. Um, even if it's like Kodak Gold in a point in a shitty point and shoot, like there's yeah. a feeling of that. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, sometimes a film just film just sings differently than a digital file. There's there's no other way to explain it. It just it just hits differently. Um, even some of those those miss shots, I sometimes prefer more than you know when I actually nail the focus. Uh, and that's those are some of my my favorite photographs when I just unexpectedly just user error. I mi I misread that zone or I, you know, didn't get the portrait right on, on, on a photo I took of Maddie or something. It's just like the movement and the emotion that film. Cause when you miss a shot digitally, absolute garbage. It's garbage. Like, dude, it's horrible. You but can't, that, that's why when like you're, but when you mess up on film, sometimes it's better than when you, when you nailed the focus. So uh, and, there's, and then you that. like, we're so, at least I'll talk for myself. I don't say we, yeah, I'm, you know, okay. I, I take a shot. All right, so when, when Joe takes a shot, he zooms in 100% immediately on the eye. Otherwise, he moves on, right? Is that true? Yeah. Um, you know, and then when I'm like going through film and I'm doing that, I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? I take a step right. back, I have a 27 inch screen, and I'm like, oh, I don't know. You know, I'm just like scratch it. And then yeah. I take a step back out of the room and I walk in, I'm like, wow. I'm like, that's really nice. Yeah. You know, like, I love that. I don't need to like, dive into it like I would a digital file because you miss it, a digital focus and you're like, uh, next. Yeah, I find I've got, a, you know, I sent up like 60 rolls of film from the workshop. I get it back probably in a few days, um, hopefully tomorrow or Wednesday, but there, I, I film, even how long I've been shooting it, I mean, it's only been five years, but I still get surprised when I, sh like, by shooting film. I love, digital doesn't surprise me. It's very calculated. I know what I'm gonna get. It rarely changes, but depending on the film stock, depending on if I pushed or pulled, depending on if I overexposed, there's so many different things that you can do technically up front. When you get those scans, dude, I'm constantly surprised and taken back when I get these scans. And I love that feeling of just being caught off guard. Um, because I feel like with digital, it doesn't catch me off guard anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's just my personal experience, but I think that's probably, the, that's probably the point of digital is to not catch you off guard. It's an instant. Right. You know, you yeah. know, it's interesting. I wonder if let's say you were to shoot something digitally, yeah. you know, with your M10, let's just make it simple. And then take the memory card. Mm hmm and put and, and not have Either chipped way. any of the any of the photos so you never yeah. looked at the back of the camera once not yeah. at all you turned it off mm -hmm. then you took the memory card and you put it away for a week or two weeks however long it typically right. takes for the film to come back mm -hmm. and get scanned and then looked at it if you would have any semblance of that excitement that you get from the film anticipation because i think with the film you're shooting into a black box sure and mm -hmm. then that black box goes into that metal you know the metal tube in there goes off flies away yeah then all of a sudden you get, get, get locked yeah but, but the mystery of okay is this roll is there anything fucked up in the roll all no right. i get all then, that you're paying for the mistakes and that's the beauty of it it's like it's i'm precious. giving hard -earned dollars on these 36 frames half of them are going to be shit and i paid for that mm -hmm. I, you can't like i i don't know obviously i totally get what you you're think saying. that it makes you more accountable as a photographer Oh, 100%. It makes be me being a fast paced kind of individual, especially my personality being pretty extroverted. I enjoy how film makes me slow down. But also there are times where I, I respond quickly on film. And um, so it's a give and take there. I, I like moving quickly with film at times, but I also like how it you're, flips you're down. doing this fast, but I don't see you going like this. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Whoa. It's weird. Yeah. <laughs> no, that, that wasn't weird. Oh, that would, maybe it was a little weird. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm Sorry. not kidding. Um, no, and I, yeah. And, my, and there are times, I mean, I, when I go to, to India or Cuba, India is probably my favorite place on earth and probably where I'm going to go next once, you know, travel is acceptable. India? Uh, oh yeah. 100%. Um, I, I rock the M10 M6 combo. And so I, I'm shooting often with, uh, with the M10 and I rarely, I look at my step at the end of the day. I don't kind of scroll through the screen. Um, while I'm shooting, you know, scenes ha come and go so quickly. What about an M10D? You ever think about? Yeah, I did test one of those. I've never ones. tried one. They're f absolutely incredible. I will probably eventually transition to the M10D. I 
got a great deal on the M10, uh, just the original, the first one. Yeah. Um, I shot the M10D when I went to uh, Argentina, mm-hmm. and that was it was, what, it was such the, an incredible experience. What's the deal with the um, film advance? Does it do anything? No, it's just it's just a lever. It's just purely aesthetic. It's just okay. free to rest there. Uh, okay. as you it. Does it fully like? No, it doesn't. Or? No, it just locks. Rest. Uh, okay. just, yeah, it goes about a few centimeters and then just locks there. But okay. to have the ISO wheel on the back, you know, that's obviously how you set your ISO. Mm-hmm. But also it's got the app to where I, there, I saw myself where like at the end of the day, I just like load up the, the app. Like, oh, did I nail that exposure there? You don't know. But yeah. um, but no, I think that is probably the move uh, digitally for me next is mm-hmm. to, um, but also, you, I mean, there are things you can do in the M10 where you could turn off the LCD screen, you know, yep. not have yep. it on. Um, but I think that's such a beautiful way you know you i think in film i and i practice uh and i when i try when i shoot digital i still try to carry my the way that i am with film i try to carry that over when i shoot digital well, you I try, try to, to, yeah i mean the biggest thing i've learned um is each each frame counts mm-hmm. when i'm shooting digital i try to keep that in my mind that um uh each each frame matters and if i shoot digital like i'm shooting film then i'm waiting for the talk about the decisive moment you wait for that perfect right. moment and you take a frame instead of yeah. all the moments leading up to it all the moments after and trying to find the perfect frame in post you right. know did, did i get it did i get it did i get it you know that feeling of not knowing if you got it right will continue right. will push you to make potentially your best photo yeah that, that's absolutely yes and then and again everybody has their own <laughs> their own, I guess, perspective on this. And film, I think, is just making me a sharper, um, it's, it's, I think it's making me a better photographer. I, it's, There's no I, doubt it is. And, and that's just like, I, I look at the greats that are still out there. I mean, Joel Merowitz and Steve McCray, just to name the two that inspire me the most that are up in age. Like, they've all, they're all digital. They don't shoot film anymore. And I'm just like, what yeah, are, most, am I doing it the right way? Like most old school film folks that you know they they typically we're all transition. But I, I I I we had this guy Chuck Fishman on who I, I friended. He lives locally to me. He really <laughs> kind of taught me how to develop black and white. And he has the crazy dark room and is you know does all his printing. Um, mm-hmm. He won't t- he, if he has to touch a digital for something he will like a Canon. Yeah. Uh, but he is just M six M three M two. Older gentleman, also older, yeah, in oh, love that mid to late sixties. Yeah. He's like, nah. He's like, I'm like, what about this M9? Look at the colors. Yeah. He's like, fuck it, like no. Wow, that's it, you man. Know? I love it. And it's <sighs> like, it's I got to I respect it. I mean, it's a whole art, and mm-hmm. to the printing, which is something I really want to get into, and yeah, I'm sort of like waiting to hold off, but I want to. Because to do it, you got to do it right. Like, right. You can't like yeah, absolutely half-ass it. But um, mm-hmm. like I, this morning before, I just developed two rolls that I shot yesterday during the session. Nice. Uh, from the rolly, and it's like hanging in the bathroom. And awesome. probably when you can't done, wait to scan that. Stuff I can't wait. Yeah. yeah. And that's exciting. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And then I send it to you, and you're like, "Wouldn't it have been easier if you just shot it on your M10?" No, <laughs> no. I, I love I love the stuff that you're doing in the exploration that you're on, and. And I get it. I mean, I think that the whole lot, you know, because I, I did film ages ago and uh, everything from processing to doing all of my own printing. Love it. Um, yeah. You know, this predates scanning. Hmm. Um, but um, I, I think that it really does come down to the accountability factor that if you're going to give somebody 36 frames, mm-hmm. they have to make them count. And I almost wonder and I almost would love to pursue this is I'd love to do a workshop, you know, where mm-hmm. I'm just going to say like, okay, here's what you have. I'm going to, you know, here's the basic fundamentals of using this camera and here's all you have. You have just however many frames. Yeah. And, and not only do I want you guys to go out there and shoot something, but I want it to be cohesive and the- thematic so that, it, you know, whether it's the one frame that you get out of it that you love or you get six of them, whatever, yeah. Um, I it's, think that it would make people slow down and be more accountable for the work that they're doing. Because yeah. one of the things that I think a lot of people have the tendency to do is, you know, you get to a new place and you're like, you right. Know, I mean, you've seen it, you know, you look on people's Facebook, you know, and, and they'll go somewhere, you know, 
love being blah, blah, and, and not photographers and they'll put 130 photos up. Yeah. And you're like, Oh, please, man. Or, <laughs> or like, you know, do you want to see our vacation pictures? And you're like, no, I don't. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I would love to see all your honeymoon photos if you ever, you know, yeah, of course. I think it exists somewhere. I've, no, I was sort of, you know. I mean, I can show them if you want. But all, 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 all 16, right? Speaking yeah, all 16, of that, yeah, that, that was sort of the... Uh, your your wife seems to be a pretty not, fundamental participant, um, muse maybe. Perhaps. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's my uh, favorite subject to photograph. It's and amazing. I, and she's she's got an incredible... She's so, she's so willing, which is nice. My my wife is, is does not like her <laughs> photo taken. Well, she's very stylish and, and she mm-hmm. looks very comfortable and natural. And I'm sure that that's largely enhanced by the love that you guys have and the relationship you have. And it translates. I mean, it's part of the story and it's part of the way that you share things. It's, it is. Yeah. It's really special. I mean, it's, it's not, it's not often that you see that, mm. you know, um, that, that level of sharing. Yeah. Yeah. We're, I mean, she's, now shooting film also, which is fantastic, oh, wow. super hot. Uh, shooting on her little Konica Hex R, and so she's, yeah, she's crushing it. Um, and so that's been fun to see her kind of get excited about that. You know, we did this whole trip, and usually we'll, I'm, I'm pulling out the M10 or, or a Canon to shoot for her, and she shot, I think, close. I should probably shot like ten rolls, right? Uh, which is just you know exciting for her. Um, and so what she, she have on the Konica? Uh, it's she's shooting all Kodak. Um, no, what, what is it a fixed? Is it a fixed yeah, it's a, it's a 35. Yeah, it's, it's 35. Kind of okay. Yeah, 35. Uh, the RF or the AF? 2.8 AF. AF, okay. Um, and so that was a that was my second film camera I bought. She got me the Canon 81. I got mm. kind of hex R, shot a lot of my early work on that before I got into Leica. Um, and it just kind of held. I don't, I'm not a, a trade and buy and sell kind of camera guy. I just kind of, it's hard for me to let cameras go. I'm attached to them emotionally. I don't know how you guys are, but I have friends who will literally buy a camera for two months and then trade it. And they're constantly trading and buying sounds. Like, dude, I don't know how. That's... I've got one camera in my entire so, career. Like a key. Dan knows nothing of that. So Adam and I were just like... You're the trade guy, huh? Um, Adam as well. Um, and we have a couple friends that... On speed, really. Sort of. How and, you and, and for me, what I really take out of it is I need to know what's out there and I need to use it. Sure. I'm not going to go to Adorama or B&H and yeah. like find what I want. And, and in five minutes, you know, if you can even touch the camera and now that right. obviously is out the window, but it really kicked into high gear with uh, COVID and you're like, well, I'm stuck at home. I need the stuff to come to me. And it's like, what, I'm not going to spend five grand, six grand, seven grand. I'm going to use what I have that I feel like I could part with at the moment. Um, and see what I like. And you know what? I found the pen. I, I, Pentastic Seven actually wasn't this way. It was a very dear friend of my wife's friend, her father. Yeah. This was his Pentax Six Seven, and oh, wow. and he just like he owns a restaurant in town. I'm very close to them, and he's like, yeah, yeah I'm not using it. The lenses were filthy. Um, mm-hmm. You know, so I cleaned it off, and I was like, this is fucking awesome. Oh, you God. know. That's and then the Plaw Bell, I had I traded some stuff, and then like I got the, traded the M3. You get it back, and and if you trade within a certain group. Like yeah. we, I have a, there's one guy that I do a lot of trades with and like, sometimes you just end up, it's a loner. You end up getting it back. Cause you know, it, it almost would make sense for us to just kind of pool our gear and We've just have about it. that. Yeah. I mean, Dan, Daniel and I talked about like, if, if we lived closer, we could potentially just pool some bodies and lenses because yeah. I don't really feel that sentimental toward the stuff to me. Yeah. They're more tools. I mean, yes, mm-hmm. I love the gear. Love it. Love it. Love it. I think it's incredible. It's beautiful. But um, have you? Yeah. No, have you shot with um, an M9, Joe? No. Okay, so mm-hmm. I think Adam. Send him your. I, M9. I, I, I could. I could speak for Adam and myself. <laughs> the M9 is better than the M10. Oh yeah. They're different. No. They're, yeah, they're very okay. I so didn't shot with the M9. I know. Okay. No way. No, no. No, no, Joe, no Joe, 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 you're going to remember this oh, conversation. Oh, shit. I don't know. And bro. I know you're, you're, you're online. You know what's going on and better than me. And, you know, you, you're, you're out there. Um, if you pick up an M9 and you go out and shoot with it, same way you'd shoot film, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. It's slow. It's not versatile like, your M, like an M10. I have, mm-hmm. you know, my, my, my M9's right, you know, behind yeah. there. Um, the colors 
you're going to feel more attached and more, you're going to shoot <laughs> digital more, not trying to get you to shoot digital by any means. Oh, yeah. But when you have to shoot digital, it's going to The colors are better on the M9. You think? Oh my. The thing about the M9 is that the actual digital negative, the raw file that comes off yeah. is so unbelievably beautiful in every respect that there's, there's almost nothing you need to do with it. Nothing. Right. It, it, and and if you're coming from a film perspective, you know, especially shooting a lot of portrait and such, it it will definitely fit in with what you're doing. Um, right. it, the M9 has tons of limitations. You right. can't shoot it like the M10 at all. Um, if you need to go to 3200, you, that your M10 is the guy. If you got to go to 1600, your M10 is the guy. But if you don't or need to do that, or if you're shooting in like harsh lighting conditions, I mean, it's it's a, it's it definitely likes. Certain conditions, sure. Yeah, not as, as resilient as, as, as film, does as the as does film, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, you're not going to pick a 100 speed when you're going somewhere that you can't shoot that. Daniel out here with the hot takes, man. That's. But I, I'm like incredibly confident that if you and you got your hands on one, yeah, lights out. You yeah. you will see. And, and that's a camera that a digital, the only digital camera that I feel sentimental towards. Wow. And I traded yeah. my I traded mine away for a big mistake. Not sentimental. Yeah. And and actually, knock on wood, not knock on wood, but I got it back. That's great. And like, a, yeah. ended up, and I got it back. I'm like, I am not letting this go. I let my here. No, but that that's that. I, look what I look what I did to one of my cameras. I, I'm I'm the same way about my M9, Joe. I wouldn't get rid of it. Like the M10, you know, at some point uh -huh. it'll it'll reach end of life, perhaps. Yeah, but the M9 is always going to be special. What, is it 21 mega? What's it? 18. 18. 18. But you but can cro you can crop in for days. The the CCD that. sensor somehow captures detail. Yeah, yeah. In, and it's it, it's in, more it's punchier. It's not as like smooth as an M10. But it's um, super organic. The and the so color is it's, I, it's a special thing. It really. So is. this is my M9M that I just. Oh uh, wow! That I just fucked up beyond belief. Oh, that's incredible! Um, and yeah. I did. I did it wow. for a few reasons. One of them being, and that's a completely monochrome. You know, I I would shoot everything in in black and white if I could. And um, the M nine monochrome is also incredibly special. It, it doesn't. It's the look same like exact else. sensor, except you yeah, know, color filter. M ten monochrome is incredible. So I got to play with those. I got yeah. rid. I, I I sold. I sold mine. Um, oh really. Yeah, I had it since I bought it the month before, you know, the pandemic, and I was like, oh, yeah. I'm on a high. Like, and then COVID yeah. hit, and I was like, mm. I don't need it. Yeah. You know, I'm pretty. I'm, it, I'm a pretty sentimental and emotional guy, so to let go on cameras is like, I don't know how you guys do it. I just, I, I just, yeah, it's hard for me to let things go. I think I did, have so much memories attached to them. You know, I don't know. I just, but also, I I dream about thirty, forty years from now when like whenever we start to have a family, mm -hmm. like my kids, hopefully to kind of like give them this, like, Oh, that's all, know, that's, just, that's, that's all I think about. They're going to yeah. be like, I, I've, I've Dad, two kids and like, there's no such thing as batteries anymore. Right. Like my, 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 my five-year-old son comes in, he goes into my closet. He goes, is this film or digital? Is this film or digital? Cause he wants, he wants yeah. to shoot digital. So, you know, he ends up taking the Rico GR and yeah, yeah. Rico's great. The 28, you probably, 28, you know. yep. yeah. So he's just like sh shooting and the two has the pop-up flash and he's going oh, nuts. That's so great. I've even given him my M9 around. He's like, Mike, don't fucking drop it. You know? <laughs> exactly. And oh, uh, that's the dream, man. Yeah. Know. Just to like hold on. Cause I, I just picked up my second M6, but to be able to like give my first M6 to my kids someday is just, that's not that is just, because I, mean, I, 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 I almost sold it. My first M6. I'm very thankful I didn't. Um, just because it's like, oh, this is what got me into all yeah. this mess now, all this like a mess. I think there's with no film, I think with film that that there's definitely more sentimentality because it's timeless and right. it's mechanical, and you know, it's not really, it's not really going to hit obsolution in no. that sense. Yeah. But the digital stuff at a certain point, I think, will hit obsolution. Because mm. um, with digital, your eyes are always on the next. On the next one, what's the next one going to be able to do? Right. What's yeah, it's the, funny. My uh, camera store, my so local true. camera store called me just before we did this podcast. And um, they're like, hey, we just got an M10R um, in stock. You know, Is that and, the 40 megapixel? Yeah. yeah. And we're like, and, and, and I'm not kidding. Uh, you know, uh, Alan's camera called me and, um, you know, and offered it to me. 
like, and I'm sure that there's like 30 people on this list that want this camera. And I was very thankful, but I'm, I'm not yeah. jumping on that. Very thankful. Right if you called me a week ago, things might've been different. I no, 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 no. I'm happy with what I have, but it's just, yeah. I love that. Yeah. It's pretty cool. But, um, so what kind of, uh, so the, with this workshop that you were talking about, yeah, um, is that going to be, how are people going to be able to get that thing? How do we know? Yeah, we're just, they're, uh, they're working through the edit right now. Like I said, I get the photos here in a few days, so which is about 1200 photos. So I'm going to go through and curate those and kind of make selections. And, um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's going to be offered online. Uh, it was, it's been promoted as two and a half hours long, mm -hmm. uh, 13 sessions, but with how well certain elements of the workshop went, um, I think it's going to be closer to four, maybe five hours, um, which wow. is really exciting. Um, it's just, I, I don't envy them in terms of the edit because it, <laughs> it's going to be an absolute nightmare for them to get it down because it just, it flowed so well. Like there was just so many good scenes that we discovered um, over those five days of filming that, uh, you know, we hoped for and it exceeded our expectations. So I'm, I'm pumped to see what the final um, slot of time is going to be. Um, but yeah, that's, that will probably be available. I are probably going to push that out second, third week of uh, November, just before uh, Thanksgiving. So um, yeah, I'm pumped. Trailer should be out soon, but uh, that's awesome. yeah, man, I'm, I'm pretty excited to see yeah, the response. And um, I kind of dive into my editing philosophy in terms of post-production, which I'm pretty protective of. Um, uh, so I kind of, I, I dive a little bit into that, that process uh, for the first time ever, which I'm pretty excited about. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pumped. I'm pumped about it. That's super exciting. Well, we sounds like a, it's going to be a sure. great thing for people to get their hands on because I think that, you know, like I was talking about before, I'd much rather see that than somebody sitting there talking about reciprocal light values and 100%, which is exactly, this is completely not part of that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I rarely get into any kind of anything technical. There is going to be a portion where I try to explain, explain, cause on the ranch, I pretty much shot all zone stuff. Cause it was just at two M sixes on and I, and I shot the entire workshop on film. And so the, um, I'm just like one black and white, one color. And that's like my dream setup with the end, which is why I got a second M six is like, and I had a 35 and a 28, um focal lengths but like eventually the, the dream is 28 28 black and white color just constantly you know that's so that's you're it. pretty much shooting at like a like a i mean not to get technical but sure, yeah. um, i can i can dance no no only because you know um i like to shoot wide open mm -hmm. um so the one thousandth of a second Oh, is always in the back of my mind. Said, well, if I had, you know, whatever FM and Nikon FM two, you go to four thousandth of a second. Right. Obviously, you get different glass, and I'm not moving from this system. Sure. Um, but if you're zone focusing, you're probably at like five, six, or eight. And mm -hmm. am I mm -hmm. am I off? I don't know. I oh yeah, I'm, I I definitely do not go. I rarely get down to five, six. My sweet spots f eight, f eleven. That's kind of that's my 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 camp. Mm -hmm. um, for the the ranch day, I was at 800 ISO, so a lot of portrait 800. I was pushing mm -hmm. over at HP5, the most superior black and white film on earth. I don't want to hear any tri -X. That's what I use. No, no, HP5. Ilford guy, I'm a Kodak guy through and through, but Ilford. But, you know, it's it's funny because like I. There it is. There, yep. I mean, it's, it's yes, what I got it's all, all, all go. the time. Um, here you go. Yep. It's funny because being an being an American, I mean, like. Um, you know, all the photographers that I admire, it's like they, you see them with the tri -X and pushing it in. Oh. And then I kind of feel nostalgic. And when I shoot color, I shoot portrait 400, I shoot portrait. Yeah. I don't shoot Fuji and, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but then I sort of did some research and people were telling me we had the Carmen Cita lab on. And yeah. um, that the, when Kodak went out of business and they, opened back up and you know started that the chemistry change for triax and it's not the same mm -hmm. triax as it was and people talking about those differences and yeah and then trying hp5 and i was like yep this is it. you know yeah um i'm an hp5 guy 100 percent. i mean yeah, I, I i shot triax decades ago yeah but i haven't i don't tried like to make a formula work. what's yeah. that i tried to make triax work i don't Could like be, the new formula yeah. at all yeah it's it's 
I I was at a wedding uh, a couple two months ago, and I was. I do like their P P thirty two hundred. Isn't that Kodak? Yeah. Black platform because yeah. then it's Delta for. Ilford. I like the Delta. Delta thirty two hundred and some. There's a Kodak thirty two hundred. Yeah. yeah and I, I pushed the HP five two stops in one twenty, and got oh, wow. and got great results. Yeah, I would push it to sixteen also when I was it's shooting. So there. it's so resilient. It's amazing. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> And yeah, are you mostly, most of the time, are you pushing or pulling your film or are you shooting? Uh, it yeah, it, it, it obviously varies on, 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 mm -hmm. you know, on the scenario, like, for, like pretty much everything in New York that I shot, it was almost always Portrait 800. I think that's my, if I had to choose one film stock for the rest of my life, it'd probably be, you know, P800 for sure. Um, I'd, I'd meter it at 600, I'd meter 800 at 400, I'd meter it at 200, still hold up. Mm -hmm. um, I'd push 800 to 16. Uh, incredible. Um, so I, you, yeah, my go-to was just like, I'm, I'm always at for the most part, um, 800 ISO sometimes I, on cloudy days, rain, you know, different, you know, yeah. tough lighting scenarios. I'd push it to 16, but still hold up. So I'm always trying I'll, to find ways to, you know, you're always trying to find ways to push or pull as my exactly. wife's walking in her bathrobe. <laughs> this yeah. is this is high class stuff here you know this is you need great. to have a little more bokeh Dude, on your yeah, uh, I know. yeah have more bokeh yeah i love it i call adam 10 minutes before we're supposed to be on i'm like dude i can't find my fucking H hdmi thing that, that, so i can your use dongle. you know my get the nice bokeh that adam's got that's all um I was like, fuck it, I'm just going to, you know. Yeah, we nerded out in the beginning of this thing. Yeah. And we got like now I can't these find little ships. HDMI adapters so that we could use our DSLRs um, oh, to, so to capture our video. That's why Adam looks so good. And Well, that's not the only that's reason why. why. That's one of the many. It's one of the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, man, this film stuff is so awesome. I, I Honestly, like, I really, I really kind of think I want to do one of these workshops. Um, film workshop with people yeah. because i think that it just it, it holds people accountable it, it's like it's yeah. there's so many things in life that are like that you know if, if it comes too easily you're not going to work as hard yeah but if you have to really work for it then then you, you might be more invested and i think it's that it's, it's worth it and i, yeah. I tell you, it takes time you know the, where i've gotten in my career was did not happen overnight it's been a long almost decade you know, learning process, and I'm still learning a foot right. on every day and every new uh, photographic situation I get myself into. There's constantly growth there, but it's like it's worth the hassle, it's worth the mistakes, it's worth the the, the missed rolls, it's worth all of those. Yeah, all those situations. It's it's worth it. I don't know. It's just I feel completely, I 100% the same way. And for me, also in developing, as something that like I've taking a lot of time for him when I fuck up a roll. Right. Or when I used to fuck up roles, um, I get so down. I'd be like in a bad mood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, my, and my wife's like, did you fuck up a roll? Yeah. I was like, mm-hmm. And there's just nothing on there. Yeah. You know? And then, and then when you get it, and you're like, there's an image. And then it's not just yeah. there's an image. Is it, is it, you know, it, go, it goes to like, and I, I sent a couple of roles out um, mm -hmm. to a lab and I didn't like the, for the black and white side. I like the color... I, I don't really mess with color at home. I, yeah, you know, um, but they kind of butchered the black and whites. Oh, Oof. dude, let's Remember? not even talk about that. That last couple of rolls I sent out really bummed you know, me out. They, yeah, they oh, just okay. like was it lab or was it? It was a lab. It was yeah. lab. And like it was, I, I had him, I had him push it lab. like one stop, and they must have pushed him more because they were so muddy. Oh. And, well, that you know, was, yeah, that and then and that was like an exercise where I really was trying. I was like trying two different cameras, but in the same scenario, right? Because it was like this. This it was actually a client that wanted film shot alongside digital. Oh, nice. So I was gonna. I was trying to figure out like what would be the best tool for the job. So I set up like kind of like a, a very controlled setting, yep. and I shot things a certain way. And they 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 like wanted grit. So I was like, yeah, we're gonna push it a little bit, you know, just to get a little more grit. And the, the the negs came back just gnarly. Oh, just, brutal. Yeah. yeah. So so it just, it, what it told me is that I'm not going to use that lab again. So what he should have done was just sent it to me. And there I, it is. I would have. Yeah, uh, Silbert it. Enterprises. Just, I do not want to do that now. <laughs> There's too much pressure to have for anyone but myself. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't even gotten into that, that sphere yet. of just well, Maybe with this new homestead. Homes. 
Well, and that's, nice. that's always been the dream. It's like in New York, it's like, eh, I don't have the space or the time. And for me, it's like, I'd rather be shooting than spending hours and hours right. scanning. Right. I've heard, but if you're I've heard shooting mixed 20, reviews. Yeah, I mean, if you're shooting 25% of your work in black and white, I would, I mean, obviously the right. most people will do black and whites in, in their home. You know, yeah. color, the temperature, color. Uh, I've been getting a lot. Yeah, developing color at home has been getting more popular. I feel like it's getting Cassini still, and all those companies are doing these like yeah. two bath, simple. I did it, and it, it looks great. But yeah. um, if you did, if you sh- if you develop your own black and like just black and whites, like that's what mm-hmm. I. It's a whole world that is just like a whole, and it's every from which chemistry which dilution of the chemistry how do you agitate how, how often right. are you agitating right it's just you know to how the end to you can control how yeah and you're seeing the photograph from inception to comp- like you're seeing the you, entire it, process it, from well, starting well, imagine if you did all that and then and made you, print. And instead of scanning print, it you right. printed it 100 percent. Yeah. which is why like i am you printed a contact sheet you yep. took out your that's loop, you picked the ones that you wanted, mm-hmm. and then you printed those and it never hit your computer. Yeah, that's the end goal for me. And hopefully to like have a separate studio space on our two acres to where I can like finally invest in all the right equipment and finally mm-hmm. get into that process. And, and what's nice is with that time. film stuff, it's like, it's not, people are giving it away. Yeah. Because oh, enlargers like, it's collecting all enlargers, stuff, yeah. all that stuff. Like, they, wow. you know, I've seen like, like those Leica enlargers, a couple hundred bucks. Unreal. You know, and yeah, obviously you have to build it right. And when you're processing, you don't need a dark room. You just once you get it set up and you've got the, the archiving process ready to go and you've got it all, it's gonna, I mean, that's, that's the you rhythm. See the, you know, and I, and like you, I came from a digital world. I, I was in a, I was in a band and I learned on, you know, on tour and uh, on a digital, you know, Canon Rebel. And, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Um, and like I shot, I, I guess I shot film, but I was, I wasn't a photographer by any means. I, whatever. Right. Um, so film, like I'm sure you, is like going back in time, you know. Yeah, it's not how we learned. I learned by looking at the back of a screen and seeing what I got. Yeah. Um. So that that's my love affair, and that's what drew me to your work. And mm. um, you know, since I'm in my head mostly a black and white shooter, I look at your colors, and it makes me want to go out and shoot color film. Yeah. And oh, I love that. Yeah, colors is the way to go, man. I. <laughs> I, but I do love black and white, man. I just, there's something about it sometimes where I'm just like this moment or this scene was meant for black and white. Um, but there I are times- to see I, that ranch stuff. I'm just picturing the ranch stuff in black and white. Oh, it's so good. I shot, was yeah. It like dust from the horses and- Oh, you guys have no shit. idea. I mean, it was, it's so the best part about it was like, we were just kind of following around their like daily farm chores, you know, or ranch chores and 40,000 acres. 40, what? 40,000, 40,000. Yeah, uh, 90, I was about 99, just under 100 of their cattle had like come down off the mountain early for winter. Mm-hmm. They just know how to do that. And so they, and it was in their like neighbor, which is like five miles, their neighbor's five miles away. Mm-hmm. Uh, the cattle was on their neighbor's property. So they had to go and herd them on the main road in town. There's only one road. They had to herd all of them back to their eight, their property five miles away. So we drove all the horses over there. I got on a horse and I just watched them kind of chase down and herd them. And so it was just, I shot probably 10, I, I, I shot on that day. It was only from like sunrise till about 1 PM was kind of how long that lasted. I shot probably 14 rolls, mm. half black and white, half color. Where you're like, I picture you like on a horse. There's trying to like, it's hilarious. no, yeah. I'm like literally holding my two like as, as I'm going, I'm just, so you, just like so you probably, together. You like probably sent them in for a, a recalibration. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have to do that here soon. So it's just, <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. I'm pretty excited to see how that turns out. So I think the black and white is going to look absolutely incredible. Um, That's awesome. I also think the color is going to look beautiful also. Where are your glasses from? I'm a big glasses guy. These? Yeah. I have these from, uh, Actually, is it mascot? Mascot, yeah. yeah. And you just said, yeah, I love tinted it's lenses. It makes you have to really into the tint. I haven't gone blue yet, like blue purple. It's nice. I got the 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 orangish kind of yellow warm ones. I thought yeah. some brand, uh, mm-hmm. but then I saw these. I was like, oh, this is exactly. Did, oh, did you see? Did they do they sell like with the tinted? Yeah, they like this. So there was okay. this, like, the lightest blue. They had like a darker blue, like this. And I wanted mm-hmm. to, like. Are blue. they a prescription class? I am nearsighted, and I need that. But with how much I'm on my computer and phone. I don't need glasses when I'm on my device. I only need it when I'm driving. So mm. 
I chose to not get these prescribed. Um, okay. But oh, so yeah, you can actually like see them and then and then pick them and exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, for me, I need to if I'm shooting for sure. I need I need them, especially my right mm -hmm. eyes. Like, you know, I need glasses. Yeah. Um. So when I'm trying to get colors, I have to bring examples of oh, wow. of what I want. And yeah. So it's sometimes I get in the back. I'm like, dude, that's that's not the color. That's which eye do you guys? Which eye do you guys shoot out of? I use my right eye to focus. Yeah. Right so eye. It's kind of like <laughs> so. My right eye. If, if sometimes if I like I was doing one job, it was a small job, and I forgot my glasses. Yeah. Usually I always wear them, and I was like, fuck, man. I have like. I feel like you, people, Yeah, I feel like most people use their left eye. Really? I don't like, know. I feel like but that would be weird because then your right eye would your left eye would be. Right, right and I, I cringe every time I see somebody with like a range finder. Good. Your left eye, you can use to see what's going on outside the exactly. outside world. When I first got into Leica, I was using my left eye, and so I was like, I was doing this, mm -hmm. and then I was like, this is not it. So I had to like train, train. my other. If, eye. I tr if I try my left eye, Google. I can't even keep it open. Yeah, it's so true. No, I, I can. Use... I keep it open. I I kind of go back and forth. But see, the only camera where I could find that I could really keep my left eye open is the M3 because of the magnification it mm. it's the last camera you sh you'll ever use joe but um oh, i'd love an m i want an m2r that's like my yeah. next is that screw one? mount no uh it was the first quick load that they oh. used for vietnam because uh, on the m2 the original it, the spool came out and it, you know, yeah, yeah. Few minutes to reload it but they needed a quick for the for like war photographers for you know and so they made like i think it was a limited amount i can't remember not a lot but um it was the first you know how the m6 loads now it's the yeah. exact model that's where it started with the m2r that it's sounds always right. been like one of those yeah how much do you i mean at this point i'm sure you, you don't even pay attention to the light meter on the inside but how do you find it the m6 oh fine i don't use any i yeah you don't. i'm pretty it has done great for all my work i guess uh, yeah at this point i mean the batteries die quick which are for at least mine um or how yeah, much i think when you use it as much but, as you do they probably <laughs> Yeah, so I know I, I think the light meter inside the M6 is incredibly reliable. I don't use any external meter whatsoever, mm -hmm. and so now it's even like I know, well, not anymore, but like when I was shooting every day in New York at ISO 800, I knew exactly. I didn't even need to meter. You know, I yeah, do that. You know where you're at. When I'm in, when I'm walking in in the, in the shadows, I knew exactly where I was. When I turned a corner into the sun, I just mm -hmm. pop up to 100th of a second, go to f11. That's 100. sort of like I could do a blindfolded. It was like that. I am very interested in in in, play, in messing with an M5 for mm -hmm. a couple of reasons. One, yeah, nobody, nobody nobody talks about the M M5 because it's no. ugly. It doesn't. Yeah, but you yeah, know it was what? the one that I, looked I, different I, than all the others. I put it up. I I it was one in my local shop for like eight hundred bucks, like six eight months ago, and I should have picked it up. Yeah. Um, but you're seeing the shutter speed inside. The oh. shutter dial hangs over, so it's much easier to maneuver. To yeah. change shutter speeds um obviously the metering is it's the uh crosshairs of yeah you know like yeah yeah it's not an led readout um so it's and it's affordable i mean it's affordable it's like affordable right um so i'm curious to yeah i passed up on one about that too yeah so i, I i'm more if i were to buy another because i have an m3 it's actually in for a cla right now nice and it's getting a new a new uh, outfit. The leatherette oh. was like literally you could just pick chunks of it off. It was so oh, wow. Nice. So it's going to be like a new camera. I can't wait. Um, but I, I would consider an M6 just M3. for the usability. Yeah, they're, they're fantastic. M3s are the 50 so For the 50, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah it's 50, yeah. 90, 135, 90. Um, yeah, it's a 9.92 magnification. So... When mm -hmm. you actually hold it up to your eye and you and your left eye is open, it's like the same. Same. Wow. Yeah, because when you look at an M6, there's it's not quite, you know, you have to like learn. It's not natural for me. Sure. But looking through, and my M10, none of the M's except the M3, where it's like, oh. all right, this is why Bresson, you know, had both yeah. eyes open because it, it just yep. made sense. Yeah, I'd love eventually. I, I the dream is. I don't know if I do one or not. I would love an MP. I just to, just to oh, have yeah. that. But I think my dream thing is I just want a black paint. I need black something. Paint. M6, okay. whatever. Good. I want the brass. I want to be able to like in 20 years to mm -hmm. see the way. That's why you get an MP. The M6 will never look like that. 
never. It's not. It's just not made from brass. It'll never look like that. Right. I've been trying to get this guy to sell me his MP. He has two MPs. Oh, that's, and he's only shoots so twenty. He only oh, shoots twenty eight. <laughs> but no, he keeps listing it. Uh, he keeps listing. It's, it's got to be what four grand minimum. Yeah, I I, th- I think he would do it less. I was like, listen, I would. I was going to trade him my MC. I was going to trade him my MC. It's kind of beaded, you know, so it's not like it's not pristine. But yeah. I would want it to be able to, you know, brass it. And I would. And What's I'm his not, name? I have a buddy who has two MPs. What's his name? Dustin. Yeah, that's the guy. Roderick. Yeah, is it Dustin? Oh no, he's trying to sell me his MP. Dude, oh, shit. dude. that's so funny. Yeah, he, dude, he, I've been he, talking to him for like, ago, and he's like, "So will you actually?" Because I was like, "Dude, I'll give you my." Yeah, he only shoots twenty eights, and like I figured, you know. Oh, that's so. Funny. So I so I talked to Dustin uh, like seven months, like six months ago, maybe. Take a photo. And tell him. What yeah. Talk yeah. About that. It's so. So, so he he listed both of them, and he's like, "I'm not sure which one I want." So I was talking with him originally, and then and the latest text was, um, "I'm like, is there a way I can convince?" You? He's like, "I need to get into a digital," and I said, "Okay, I mean, there are other options, yeah. um, but." I was like, I'll give you my M6 plus cash for, for the difference. And he's like, oh, I need, I'll think about it. I'll think about it. And then he texted me, would you just do straight cash? I was like, I can't. Yeah. So, yeah. so he doesn't really want to sell. Yeah, I don't think he really. He got that I, second I, he's MP attached like, to it. He is. I don't know. I get it. But he got yeah. that second MP for like two grand. It was like some what? crazy deal. Um, oh, yeah, he got an absolute steal on it. Um, the beater one. Mm-hmm. His one's like. Mm-hmm. one's flawless perfect yeah, well, yeah. One's and i was like up. i want the i would love the beat up one i i don't uh, so he wants to sell the flawless one and keep the beater he wants to sell the beater no and keep the flawless yeah that, that's that's the move that's the move for sure and, wow. and he wants he, he wants like an xt4 he needs to do like video mix stuff like just that, buy you know? an xt4 and trade it for him man dude i he already said he wanted an <laughs> fem2 i don't even know what that is it's a nikon fem I, something oh, i don't know he, he that's what he wanted and so I literally, I called my local store. I was like, do you have an FEM too? He goes, no. Because I know like in their- sh- I think that, that's a film camera, right? Yeah. I think it's because on the, there's a lens with that camera that where you can get incredibly close. Like I'm talking like w- under a foot. In, in a 28. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, okay. there's a shoot photographer who uses that camera in New York. Um, okay. Classic Lunch, his name's Matthew. He, it's all on that camera and he's getting- shots that i can yeah, never that, get on my cause I'm, I'm, yeah because i'm talking about lenses and he's like i only I, i'm only 28 and i was yep. like I, I get i mean i don't get it but i get it so funny you know because i'm like how about this he goes yeah but i can't use 28 on it i'm gonna get that mp from dustin i swear i'm gonna apparently you will i don't know i, I don't think know. you have oh. an inside track or something that's so funny no yeah, i think MP, i just want to black paint something that's well, well you want to you want the you legacy your, you want to be able to hand it legacy. over to your kids oh, at some point. you know whose black paint looks really good that guy john um john uh, candy john randolph john candy uh I I got candy. He's an actor. <laughs> john randolph john Ra- um do you know do you follow him i think i do john he, i haven't seen a photo of his, his camera well, his camera so, sometimes he'll have like his mp and it's just like brass where where the pointer is. I'm like, you want oh, the like camera to be like, you know, um, show your your journeys. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're so beautiful. And M9s, I will say, black paint M9s will do that. So, so I really, I really think if you have a chance, just borrow, give it a shot. Give it a shot. I think you'll you'll look at the color shots and you'll say, okay, this is my this is my digital color camera. All right. Well, I might have to. Ma'am. I don't want to keep you forever. I, I'm sure this could go on for oh, yeah, right. many more hours. And uh, oh, it was a good chat, man. Um, yeah, awesome. Hey, where do we find? So you're on Instagram. Mm-hmm. So we, we're definitely going to, like, in the, you know, when we promote this thing, we'll put up your Instagram. Do you want us to put up, like, both your feeds or just, I, I guess people can find you. Yeah, it's a. I mean, it doesn't matter to me really. Uh, whatever you guys, you know, want to do. Oh, you, you put um, your street link in here, so we'll put your primary account up there. Do you, do you like have a website or something you want us to put up, or is uh, it just really the Instagram? I do. It's currently under construction now. I'm trying to do a whole remodel thing, but uh, yeah. I mean, Instagram is fine. Uh, I've right. Got I mean, YouTube. if people don't follow you, then there's something wrong with them. <laughs> no. Uh, I was listening, like, like that's the shutter of an M9. M9. Let me hear it again. Do it closer, Dan. 
Oh, am I not near the mic? To the mic. Okay, it's got that kind of almost advanced. It film sounds advanced. like a film advance. It's the weirdest thing. It is weird. People <laughs> hate it. Oh, really? Some you people just not like it. it. But it's just, I'm telling you. Yeah, if you if you were nearby, you'll, you'll, you'll send me an edible arrangement as a thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know, man. Nothing <laughs> beats this though. Oh. No, but you want to know what beats that? I don't know. Oh, this this will cut out. We, people don't need to see this shit. No, we got it. This is the best part. The RZ, I think, has probably the sexiest camera porn. Shutter sound. What is he getting? The M3. It's just... Is that M3? Yeah. Oh, so it's good. Just, it's so soft. Yep, it's the best. It's a lovely camera. Oh, it's like, you need like it, man. It's just and the M3 is actually a pretty affordable camera, you know. Yeah, they're they're not too bad right now. I just think it's uh, grand. It's just so soft. And so you have a, you have an exten- uh, external meter for that one, then. Um, yeah. so I have this, you know. Oh, nice. Um, I'm not going to say that like the void because of the hot, hot shoe mount there. Yeah, it just it goes right there, and I'll keep Cold it shoe on. Mount. You know, um, hmm. I'm getting better. I'm not going to claim that I'm. Um, Does know, the M6 have a hot shoe? Because the M3 is a cold shoe. You the actually have to use shoe. a cable. Oh, there, I didn't even know there was a cold shoe. Was even a, I don't even know what that means. Oh, so it's just, cold there's shoe, no connectivity. There's no, connect, there's no electronic connectivity. So oh, if yeah. you want to trigger a flash with yeah, the yeah, M3. Yeah. Well, not the classic. The TTL does. The I have TTL the has a hot shoe? Yeah. Shit, Do you have the TTL? Me... No, I have the classics. Yeah, same. So um, that's a cold shoe or hot shoe on the, on the non-TTL? I, I don't know. I don't actually have no idea. I have a like flash that I use, but it looks it's like all there's something. Manual. That is a con- electronic contact. Yeah, there's a, so you, you know, could the probably... TTL one just the metering is through you know through the lens. Is through the lens. Right. But um, I think they both take an on-camera flash without putting it into a sync port. Uh, now you guys got me. Uh, I don't know. The wheels turning. It's it's never ending. I'm sorry for whatever I just yes. <laughs> encourage you to get. But um, yes. yeah. absolutely love it. Well, sweet dude. Um, thanks so much. This was great, man. Yeah. Super stoked about that that your back company or that also is sexy. Oh Which, yeah, that you know that's something I've been working on for like a year and a half with him. I, so he was from Austin, Texas. Came, I just cold emailed him like six years ago. Oh, wow. I was like, love to do a shoot for you. You know, he came to Brooklyn to do a shoot and moved to Brooklyn and oh, wow. doing his stuff, photos and videos ever since. Yeah. Um, and then I started. I pitched him this idea. I like I like hats as well. So first, I like designed a whole hat thing with him, not with him, but he for him. Um, and I was like, we let's do a camera bag because there's so much, so much shit, and mm-hmm. there's so much stuff yeah. that's great that that people thinks great. That's that's not the quality's not there. Right, it costs so much that like to do a bag that sort of um, looks like it's a perfect size, man. It looks so. Yeah, so I forget if I there's leather and canvas. I don't remember which. Yeah, um, I think you wanted the canvas. Oh, I don't yeah, I wanted the leather for sure. Leather. So I probably sent. Yeah. It. yeah. Well, I'll check then. If it's not the it's leather, then you know, okay. whatever it is. But looking forward to it, man. And it Adams, Adam. Really yeah, nice. you guys should be getting it this uh, this week. It was. Oh, yeah. so stoked! So. And I, I went for the canvas. Oh. Yeah. Wait, hold on. Now, 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 I'm, now I'm worried. Not really worried, but um, no, it's all good. We'll figure it I, out. I wanted it before your. I was like, this is the perfect thing for your trip, you know. Oh, um, it's all good, man. There'll be more trips. Up. More trips coming, dude. Thank you yeah, so coming, much, dude. It's been great. Really appreciate it. Easy talk. Um, yeah, talk about photography. It's I could be doing that for hours. So no, it was a good chat, man. Great to meet you guys. Likewise. Hopefully, our our paths will cross in in the future sometime, probably twenty twenty one, but. Amazing. Um, yeah, meet up in New York next time. Fingers crossed. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm mentioning to get back, so I'm hoping to go back soon just for a week even just to shoot and see what, what the city's doing. But Maybe yeah, to I mean, pick up your new MP. Probably. Oh, yes, in person. <laughs> That's so funny.